Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and I am here with my co-host, Daniel Newman. We are here at the Oracle Industry Lab right outside of a suburb in Chicago. Daniel, we are here. We are live. And in the background, we actually have parts of the Innovation Lab itself. Yeah, we're seeing it in real time. It's, uh, it's great to be back to home for me. It was home, but I don't normally admit that anymore <laughs> as an Austonian myself. You live in the Austonian, don't you? I shouldn't tell I do. that publicly. No, sure. that's okay. Know. It's all good. But yeah, you know, we have a 6.5 on the road right here at this industry lab that Oracle just and just opened up. And by the way, super cool for us, right? Because so typically we end up having these engagements where we're hearing about the tech and how the technology exactly. works and the speeds and the feeds. Here we're really seeing how it works in the industries, a much more practical example of tech at work. Yeah, and I think it's even exciting too. I mean, we're here for a grand opening, right? Three labs were announced, but this is the big grand opening uh, here in, in Chicago. And uh, they're focused on communications industry, construction engineering, energy and water, manufacturing, public health and safety. You can imagine the types of solutions uh, that they have here, right? If you're thinking verticals, right? Let's say you've been in business for you know 50 years doing it a certain way, but then you have maybe a competitor or a big industry shift. How are you going to move to that next type of technology to give you the business results uh, that you need? And the ones that we were looking at today, right? We saw uh, robot dogs. Uh, we saw helmets that would track uh, workers. We saw a robot that actually put up drywall. Uh, unfortunately, uh, 40 years ago, when I did that for a living in uh, summer. Uh, I was the drywall robot. So some really cool stuff, but it is more than just looking at cool technology, isn't it? You know, Pat, one of the things that's been pervasive over the last couple of years, I don't know if it was COVID induced that all yeah. marketers started kind of thinking the same and all comms departments started having the same messaging, but was this sort of everything goes to a, an industry or a vertical skin. Right. And so it's cloud for A, cloud for B, cloud for C. And so what's really interesting about what's going on at Oracle is Oracle's got decades of experience working with these industries. It's at the core, most almost every company on the planet. I mean, yeah. it feels like is running some Oracle application or database. And so the depth of experience that that data has provided gives a wealth of knowledge that can be brought to construction companies, that can be brought right. to state and local governments, that can be applied in heavy industrial manufacturing or even automotive, which we saw an autonomous Indy car here, which right. was kind of like a sideshow, you know, amongst a bunch of much more, what I would say, pragmatic technologies being applied. But look, we saw applications for high performance computing clusters. We saw GPUs put right. in drones that are now flying around warehouses and helping people understand their inventory and, and, and how that actually connects to the supply chain process, um, you know, finished goods, revenue projections. This is really what it's all about. And sometimes I think, like I said, we get yeah. lost in the tech. Yeah, we do. And I'm listening. I'm, I never saw a robot dog that I didn't love uh, or a drone. And that's definitely the case here. But uh, what we're talking about is real, real business challenges. And, you know, I, I think the reason that that so many people in the industry have pivoted to, to industry as I, as I feel like in, in a way they're making a statement that this general purpose horizontal computing, I don't know, uh, is at its end. By the way, I, I don't think it is. I just think it's another way to compete. And I, I saw what I would consider the cloud native folks saying, wait a second, why are 75% of the applications still on prem and not in my cloud, right? It must be because we don't have this. But um, good points about Oracle differentiation because, you know, what I like to talk about is Oracle may not have been talking about industry for 20 years, but they've been doing industry solutions for, for over, over 20 years. And if nothing else, I think this lab is a great place to demonstrate and co-innovate uh, with, with customers to get them to that next level. Um, or that next stage in, in their company, because uh, a good example could be construction, where they may not be competing uh, with other construction companies, they're competing with a lack of workers. There just aren't enough workers, or there are certain types of environments that are dangerous for, for workers. Um, you know, what is the solution? Uh, what is the solution for this? 
there's a lot of talk in the United States about bringing manufacturing back. Well, guess what? We don't have a million people to work on iPhones and, and literally they get built by hand. So what are the types of technologies in manufacturing? And we saw an example out here of, of essentially an automated manufacturing facility using a bunch of different sensors from uh, laser beams to uh, optical sensors to be able to do this. Uh, on, on the dangerous building uh, part, we saw one of the spot robots with one of Oracle's partners being able to completely map uh, the inside of a building. And it wasn't theory, they actually did it here and they did automatically did comparisons to what the building was supposed to look like, okay? That's automatically on the fly. And you know maybe there might not be enough workers to get out there, but at least they've compressed the time to be able to go uh, do inspection. So real results for what I think uh, are considered brownfield types of, of, of industries. You know, we saw a company that, that literally, this is not thesis or theory, using drones to go and inspect um, uh, electrical towers. Now, in, in one of the places that I visit out in Horseshoe Bay, they literally have people on helicopters doing this. The helicopter flies literally right next to this power uh, uh, power station about a hundred feet in the air and a, and a guy is is sitting outside looking at it and inspecting it here they actually use a drone take videos of it uh, do machine learning against it to uh, pattern match to see how safe it is what, what condition it's in and if it's not in a good condition we will automatically send an alert uh, to the power company to let them know to go that there that there's something wrong so cost you know employee safety yeah it's a great example of human in the loop and human out of the loop and how we yeah. can apply technology ai machine learning computer vision with a servicing department to make sure we keep our infrastructure running but in the end pat it really comes down to enterprises have challenges that problems are trying to solve right in this particular location a lot of them are more of your heavy duty industrials telecommunications but this goes across every industry right problem you're trying to solve and what i like about the concept behind the industry lab is that it really looks at every problem uniquely and says yes there is a certain canned set of capabilities that maybe do fit every industry but right. then every company's challenges are unique and the lab really is about a set up and tear down type of philosophy tear it down to the bones set up the demo slash innovation lab for this particular application yeah and then rinse and repeat for different companies and different industries and i think that's going to be a key to identifying how all this technology database cloud applications infrastructure ai are going to actually be able to be applied to real world solutions which by the way we didn't have the chance while here but wouldn't you love to talk to maybe someone from oracle about this I would, and a matter of fact, let's uh, take it out to Mike Cecilia, who actually runs uh, Oracle's uh, industry uh, operations. Mike, it's great to see you and welcome to the 6.5. Uh, Daniel and I really enjoyed uh, our visit with your new lab in Chicago. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to talk a little bit more about that and, and some of the other plans that we have in, in vertical industries in general. Yeah, it was a uh, really a bummer to miss you there. Um, but as we say, all the best plans. Um, <laughs> and you know, it's funny as we all get back out on the road, we're traveling. I think all of us are are kind of relearning that muscle right now. And of course, we we forget. You know, you could be at home with a little with a little cold, and you could keep on working. But nowadays, you got to be extra careful when you're not feeling well not to go out in public. So. Yeah, in the spirit, well, in the spirit of full disclosure, I did, I did have, I did test positive for COVID that week after spending two and a half years building it. Uh, that was the week that I tested positive. I uh, was completely fine, very fortunate, but uh, certainly didn't want to put anybody else at risk. So, uh, in the old days, had I not known any better, I would have taken a little day cool and just sort of marched on and been fine. But uh, obviously, we have tests now to tell us not to do that. So, yeah, that's a great point. In fact, um, that was sort of a sign of strength over many years and now it's uh, definitely one of those things that's no longer appreciated working through illness but like i said it's, it's great that we were able to reconvene here the beauty of a new hybrid and remote world and of technology is that we can meet even when we're not physically together we certainly learned that over the last couple of years so the lab was fascinating mike and i and i really enjoyed getting around seeing all the demos hearing from uh, the leadership across several of your our verticals but let's start there let's start a little wide you know why 
our verticals and especially for technology companies, why is it becoming so important for them to break out verticals and sort of, you know, demark them and sell the technologies discreetly? Yeah, well, I think the interesting thing about the vertical applications, uh, certainly the ones that we developed, are they are the applications that touch our customers' customers. So, in other words, they're they're not just it's not just a, a B2B arrangement that we have with our customers. In many cases, it's a B2B and C arrangement, and these things become incredibly strategically important when we talk about transformational opportunities. You think about our customers, our customers have to transform by serving their customers better. So the fact that uh, the, we have this stack of applications, this vertical stack of the applications at the edge, you can imagine that this becomes a really big strategic uh, rallying card, if you will, inside organizations and, and really lends to a lot of business transformation discussions. Uh, that's not to say that technical transformation discussions are not important as well database infrastructure platforms back office applications but this class of applications i think are, are are really the class that people see touch and 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 want this tangible experience with more so than some of the others so i think that's really leading to what's driving a lot of industry clouds uh what's driving a lot of the the vertical adoption and what we like to do is make sure we go all the way to the edge. We I mean, saw some things with meter data management, things like that, all the way to the edge of the vertical so that we provide a complete solution for our customers. Yeah, Mike, if, uh, if, you, if we were new analysts, not one with 30 years of experience, uh, Daniel and I might say, wow, this new thing called vertical clouds and, and vertical, boy, all this new stuff. But uh, we're not spring chickens, and we've seen a lot of verticals uh, before. In fact, uh, I don't think Daniel and I can go to a, a, a vendor event without somebody talking about vertical, even though they, they may have been in business only five years. It's yeah. kind of funny. Uh, so everybody's doing them, but I'm curious, what are some of your differentiators? You, you, you did talk a little, about, a little bit about going all the way to the edge, but what are, what are Oracle's core vertical differentiators? Well, I, I think the main, I think there are two. So, so let me start with the main one. The main one is that we're willing to take on the entirety of the problem. So I'll, I'll stay with the utilities example there. Everything from meter data management and running software in, in meters, actual electric meters inside the home and even beyond the meter with smart thermostats and things like that, all the way back and through the financial reporting of the company, the ERP systems, the back office, and all the infrastructure required to, to power that. So if, if, to your point, if, if you look at a lot of the other folks that are in, in quote verticals or doing verticals, I think they're doing one of two things. They're doing a piece of it, a piece of a vertical, and certainly some of our competitors are involved in, in pieces, or they're taking horizontal technologies and really overlaying vertical terms on top of those. So analytics tools are one of the things that I think are, are labeled as vertical solutions, probably more so than any other. And I don't discredit the fact that I think organizations have done, uh, other organizations have done a very good job at understanding verticals and understanding what's important and how to speak in the language of that vertical. For us, the key differentiator is to deliver the entire stack. Now, part and parcel to that, since we have to deliver and build the entire stack, I think we're familiar with all of the components. And what usually happens is that customers have made investments in other vendors, other technologies for some pieces of those components. So the way that we build that stack has to be highly abstracted and we have to be able to connect to, uh, in some cases, our competitors, in some cases, of our, our partners. And that's why the lab is, is so important because it showcases not just what we've built at Oracle, but it showcases our ability to work with the ecosystem, which is equally important. I mean, it's impractical to think that one vendor is going to solve every single problem in every single vertical. I do think we can we can certainly solve and create business solutions for our fair share of them. But there will always be niches. There will always be things, that, especially in regulated industries where you have state-specific things and like that. And that's why uh, we put this 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 together, not just to showcase and innovate our own technologies, but making sure that we create a platform to stitch together all the partners as well. So I think those two things, willing to take on the entire partner, uh, entire problem rather, and also willing to embrace the ecosystem are, are key differentiators. Yeah, that deep industry domain knowledge is, is super important. And it is something with hundreds of thousands of customers being really you know, responsible for their back office operations and in many cases, the front end of their uh, customer experience and integrations provides a pretty wide scope and it's a pretty significant amount of data that you are accessing. And with all that information and of course the power of compute 
And <laughs> there's a lot that can be done to understand a business and to build solutions that are going to take them forward and take them forward faster. You hit on a few things. I think when you think about industries, you think about verticals, you think about there's been a lot of what I kind of call facading of industries where it's kind of like we're going to build one solution and then we're going to kind of make it for financials and then we'll make it for healthcare and then we're going to make it for manufacturing. And it's kind of like the same thing. And so what I really thought was interesting about the lab and what I want to get your take is that this is what you were really thinking when you built the lab is that the problems aren't a facade and the challenges even in the same industry are often different for each company. They have a lot of technical debt. They have different customer processes. They have different data sets. They have different uh, compliance and regulations in the HRIs that, you know, so a lab, right? You got to be able to build and tear down and change and co-create all these things like is that really what it came down to for these for these verticals is that you knew even if you had vertical solutions, you still need that lab environment to really build for each customer? We, we did. And I'll tell you exactly how it started was was a conversation um, in, in my office many years ago when we talked about we we're talking about our construction technology business uh, specifically at the time. We said, you know, the difficult thing is the vertical edge solutions that we supply for construction are often used in the field. They're actually used on a construction site. and when we talk with a lot of our customers and our competitors do the same, we often have these conversations in fancy conference rooms and the wet's weather control that's always 72 degrees. It's always very nice, but that's not the practical usage of the system. So we said, you know, we need, really need to build a place where people can come use these solutions um, in a real world environment, in an actual outdoor environment, indoor. And that's why the lab is indoor and outdoor because of the construction, this construction business. And, they need to be able to see, touch, and use it in the environment that they're actually going to use it in. We need to have the end users who really don't often come in our construction business to the boardrooms, to to the to the conference rooms. They're not actually working, building something. Be able to see, touch, and give us feedback and co-innovate with us at these things. So that that that's frankly how it all started. What was really most interesting to me was the lab, the building of the lab itself turned into a project. So a company called Pepper Construction, uh, one of our customers, built the lab, and they used all of our software and some partner software as well to build. And actually we had other customers come in to see during the construction phase, this thing going live and seeing the cloud solutions that we were, we were, we were demoing to. The, I think the most telling point for me was um, there was a customer who was scheduled to visit. And uh, as you know, it's not too far from Chicago. So the win the winters aren't exactly very friendly and there was a snowstorm coming in and they said, you're not going to cancel for the weather, right? We're still going to be able to come to see this thing in the weather because we have to work in the weather. Sometimes when the weather's bad, we still have to work. You know, if something topples over, we got to get out there. Do it. So they actually showed up in boots, in snow, in snow suits, with some warm jackets on, and proceeded to do the entire tour of the construction site in the lab in not so friendly weather. So I think that that was really for us the tipping point was we needed to be credible, and we needed to make sure that this stuff worked in the environment that it was actually going to be used in. And from there, you get into lots of other things. I mean, we'll talk about 5G and all that and how all that applies and all that, all, and all those things uh, apply, but that, that's, that's, that's how it happened. Yeah. I think everybody has their, their favorite uh, when they go visit the lab. Uh, I think I can't figure out which one was my favorite, the, uh, the public safety demo or the robot dog that was doing a 3d and a color, uh, color mapping of Boston dynamics. Uh, uh, robot dog that that was pretty cool but listen this is this is your this is your baby and I'm curious I know you love all your all your kids the same but was there any specific demo that you thought uh, best encompassed the capabilities or not demo the, the co-creation that that you're especially uh, proud of well, I, I think that everybody loves the dog. I love the dog. The dog has been the longest standing mascot, if you will, at the lab. The dog was the very first partner. Uh, the Boston Dynamics dog was the very first part, uh, partner to show up there uh, and do two things. But but I, I'll give you two what about an, an evolutionary example. The dog is is submitting real time data to to OCI and lots of data, doing perimeter scanning, um, high high definition perimeter scanning, uh, lidar coordinates, and all these things that it's aggregating. And it's doing that now over a 5G network. Uh, Verizon is uh, 5G, as you know from the lab, is 5G enabled the lab. This is real 5G, not 5G Edge, <laughs> not the one that you see in your radio, but actual real 5G. So you've got a few things coming together. Number one, uh, a robot, a robotic uh, thing, which is a huge help for in, in construction. 
uh, to have as many robots supplement the workforce as possible because we're short we're short workforce today in construction and uh, these are these, these robots are not taking away jobs they're ad adding to productivity to, of existing job forces streaming real time over 5G to the cloud and then oracle compute um, automatically processing all this in real time that pre 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 this uh, this 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 experiment here uh, was a pretty manual process and a manual process in which you would not get real time data. So that really is my favorite example. Uh, truth be told, I'll probably change my mind uh, as this thing continues to grow many, many times. But for now, I, I, I have to give it to the dog because it was uh, it was the first example as well. Yeah, that's a it's a fun one. And, and by the way, uh, we've seen that that uh, that dog in a few places with Boston Dynamic around the world. So it's a uh, it's always fun to interact with and for whatever reason it's a bit of a hit on social media whenever we share it people are just super blown away um by yeah. it but uh well boston dynamics does some really interesting work i still remember the the you know the the warehouse robots with the boxes and the, it's just so it's just incredible what they're building there um one of the ways mike that we typically you know, are able to qualify something like a lab is is really digging into these success stories. I liked your story about winter. By the way, I spent 40 years in Chicago, moved to Texas during the pandemic. I've grown thin skin. And now when I was up there for the day, I was freezing. It was so cold. I was miserable. Um, I immediately remembered why I left. But having said that, you know, 40 years in Chicago, you're absolutely right. So that was a great example. I mean, there's so many things we did in bad weather because <laughs> you have so much bad weather. And that's just part of uh, it's just part of building in, in, a, in, a, in a four season type of climate. But, you know, when it comes to the success stories, you know, co-creation, you know, we're hearing more about this kind of quote unquote co-creation lately, Mike. And, you know, what is a successful outcome? Do you have any stories that you can share that really are, you know, indicative of just how far and how successful a lab partnership can go for one of these industry solutions? Yeah, so so I have a couple of thoughts come to mind here. Um, it's 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 a great question because I think what you're hitting on is the is the key thing is that it really has to be a functional lab. It has to be a place for innovation and not a museum. I think I've seen lots of other labs that sometimes turn into museums and demo spaces. And well, that's I, I don't mean to be disparage that. Briefing centers, person. Mike. Briefing we've centers. Got, yeah, we've, we've <laughs> got to turn this thing in where we really create something. So. What I think has been most successful thus far, and uh, it's it's early days. It's early days, frankly. We're 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 getting revved up and getting more and more excited. Is we have over forty partners who have already signed up and have permanent a permanent fixture uh, in the lab. And I'll go back to what I said in response to your first question. Just as important to have all of the ecosystem participate as it is to showcase and co-innovate with our with our customers on the on the Oracle stack as well. If we don't do both of those things well, then we will not be as successful as we possibly can in industry cloud. So I, I'm very proud, and I think this is a this is a new direction for Oracle. Frankly, is that we have embraced and encouraged ecosystem, and some of that ecosystem, some of those partners that you see there compete with us. They compete with us for individual pieces of the pie, and that's completely fine. We can work together with those folks uh, in a great way. Now we talk about uh, success and early success. I think the work that we've done with Verizon and the fact that we've been able to take a technology like 5G, which if you think about most folks now, what is 5G gonna do? Well, it means that it's faster and uh, the bandwidth is better and therefore I can probably stream uh, 4K video over, over my phone. And from a consumer standpoint, that's interesting. But what does it really mean to businesses? It means something transformational to businesses. And the fact that we're able to put real applications, build real vertical applications on top of our 5G service, uh, in this case, uh, on top of our 5G uh, core service, which uh, of which uh, most of the major telcos are our customers, and we can showcase real vertical applications. And we're also providing a development platform so that partners can showcase real vertical applications on top of 5G. I think will be uh, in the near future one of the most successful outcomes because that is what's really going to un unleash the power of a technology like 5G. The fact that it's better, it's faster, uh, that's great. But what does it mean to solve business problems? How does it actually solve business problems? What does it mean for telemetry into uh, an ICU to look at very sick patients? What does it mean for telemetry into the meters, uh, particularly in places like Europe right now where energy conservation has is, is become a huge you know, a huge need for for uh, for the world, given given the uh, the crisis that we have right now with with uh, with gas supply and things like that. So, 
that I think is what you're going to take horizontal technologies like 5G and turn them into vertical applications. That's where that's where the value comes from, and that's what I'm pretty excited about here. Obviously, the the the, the dog the dog does that today. A, a lot more dogs to come, and and cats and reptiles and every every other thing I think will be uh, in terms of a guard variety, and that's where we're focused. And I think that's where you'll see the next round of innovation is with partners building on top of our enterprise communications platform, which is, gives you a development platform, assumes the 5G connectivity to do pretty incredible things with vertical applications. So, Mike, uh, you and your team have uh, poured your heart, heart and soul uh, into this, and you've come out with the the first lab. But I'm sure you are not uh, stopping here. Uh, besides uh, robot lizards, uh, what else should we be expecting in the future? So we we have we have two more labs uh, which are which are under development right now. One is at Reading in the UK. Uh, that will be the th th thematically focused on sustainability. Energy sustainability will, will, will showcase a lot of what we're doing with our O-Power solutions for clean energy, as well as uh, high density transport, like uh, some of the work that we're doing with uh, with the UK government for high speed rail uh, and things like that. We're also building a, a lab in Australia, in Sydney, uh, just, just near our offices in Sydney. And that is focused again on our asset intensive industries, construction, comms. And then I expect in the future, that uh, we'll have more labs that are uh, focused on things like healthcare, where we're making major, major investments today. Also on the docket and things that we're thinking about in places like Nashville and Austin, Texas, are food and beverage and uh, restaurant and hotels as well. So all of those things are in development. We'll have a lot more to say on these labs here uh, in the coming weeks, months uh, on, on the next steps. Mike, that was really interesting. And Appreciate you, you know, you coming around and coming back to us. It's always easy after an event to just move on and keep going. So, you know, we were really excited to have the chance to speak to you. Like I said in the beginning, you know, really glad you're feeling better because would have loved to have had the chance to sit down in per, uh, you know, in person. Having said that, um, you know, I'm not going to run back to Chicago anytime soon unless it's to hang out at your lab again. All right. Well, maybe Sydney. How about you? Have we come to Sydney, Australia? We can. We can. Ooh. It's always beautiful weather in Sydney. I'll take you know, that as a uh, take that as the for, take that as the formal invite. That's great. And uh, if you're opening up in Austin, uh, let us know. Daniel and I both live there. Well, we 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 will we will do that for sure. We'll we'll let you know when the, when the time is right. Look forward to hosting you in person, and uh, I promise to make it in person next time. Absolutely. And Mike, we really appreciate it. Uh, we'll have to have you back. We'll want to hear more when some of these these stories, you know, turn into customer successes. That's one of our favorite things to do is talk to the market, not just about what the tech industry is doing, but why it's working. And because as we move forward and as personalization and customization continue to be a focus, it's going to be, you know, these co-creation environments that are going to be key to making this happen. That was a great conversation with Mike. A lot of fun. It's too bad Mike couldn't join us, but hey, we are flexible with the 6.5 on the road and it's just great to be here. And you know, Daniel, one of the things that I really appreciated was that this isn't just a place to do demos, even though today this is what they're showing us. They wipe it clean, bring bring a customer in and do co-development with them. And that's pretty impressive because I've been to a lot of labs and this one I think is different. It was, it was very interesting. It was fun. I, I always like learning and getting that sort of practical hands-on experience. Cause like I said, you got to tie all this technology back to something, right. seeing it in the wild, seeing the way it gets em employed to make a difference in the world. And then of course, seeing how that innovation scales is something that I know right. both you and I really enjoy. So, you know, Mike, uh, you know, it was too bad he couldn't make it, but it was great that we were able to, to get him in on zoom, you know, for everyone out there, that uh, is enjoying the show, you know, please subscribe. You know, we take these six fives on the road and we love it, but we do our shows at home. We've got our big event, whatever it is, we appreciate you tuning in. But for now, we gotta go. We'll see you all later.